So hey everyone, Catch here. So I've uh, been asked a question about um, overclocking um, an external GPU, an Aurora's Gigabyte with a 1070 Mini in it. Um, now I'll say straight off the bat, it's, it's just not worth it really if you ask me. I think you can probably maybe get two frames per second, three frames per second. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna show you um, how to do that. Um, so you'll need something like MSI Afterburner that you have here. Um, and then you'll want something like uh, Superposition Benchmark so you can you know, test your overclocking. Um, now, the main things that you wanna do here is change your core clock and your memory clock. Uh, now I can tell you straight away on my 1070 box, uh, my core clock, um, I can get up to about 170 megahertz um, until it starts going a bit dodgy. And when I say a bit dodgy, what will happen is that uh, the uh, benchmarking or your graphics um, will start to crash. Um, don't worry about it if that happens. If that happens, you should still um, have control of your mouse, etc. Um, and all you do is click on this reset button here. Um, so I'll quickly just show you. So say I put up um, uh, this to 129 to apply it. You click this tick button and then say it started um, having side effects. You just click that and as you can see, it's reset everything. Um, okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is manually set our fan speed. So basically we wanna keep the temperature of the GPU um, basically below 70 degrees. We wanna keep it reasonably cool, um, especially as we're gonna be overclocking some stuff. Now we're not gonna be changing uh, the voltage because uh, that'll probably just break the card. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to have my fan between 70 and 80% uh, percent speed. Um, so for this, I'll uh, put it at 75. Uh, I'll apply that. And when you do this on yours, you'll hear your, your fan um, in your eGPU case uh, start to ramp up. Um, and we'll see a difference in um, a minute. Oh, straight away, you can see the temperature's already gone down to 40, um, and that will probably just keep on dropping. Okay, so I do that no matter what I'm uh, doing. When I'm gaming, I always change my fan speed uh, to seven, between 70 and 80. Uh, just to make sure that um, it doesn't overheat and we don't get any throttling. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run our superposition benchmark and we'll just run it with the stock settings. Uh, so I've got here preset custom. I've got it um, uh, set to um, uh, 1080p because uh, I don't want it to run in a um, full screen. So disable that. So it's going to run in a window. Um, and uh, I've got a shade is high, texture is high, depth field on, motion blur on. We're going to run this and we're going to see what sort of speeds um, or what sort of frames per second we get. So let's <clears throat> wait for that to load. What I'll do in this, the actual video of this is obviously I'll forward wind it, um, speed it up or cut it uh, so we can get straight to the results. So the thing to notice here is um, on the eGPU, the Hertz at the top there. Um, so uh, 1911, yeah, which is about right, um, is what we'd expect, it'll fluctuate. And then we'll let this run through and we'll see what the minimum average and the max is. Okay, so there are our results running with our stock settings. Uh, just bear with me while I just note those down. So we've got a minimum of 45.97, so 46. Uh, we've got a 59.5 for average and 74.5 for max. Okay, so now let's do some overclocking. All right, so like I said, the things, uh, the options available to us really are the core clock and the memory clock. Now, what you should do is uh, do one at a time. So, uh, for example, um, 
adjust your core clock, um, I would say in groups of 20. Um, so you'd do it up to 20, then 40, uh, then 60, and then 80. And at each one, um, click apply. So the tick there and run your uh, benchmark. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're just trying to find um, at what point uh, does our overclocking introduce artifacts or issues uh, with our graphics card? I'm not going to step through every single one because it would just take too long, obviously. Um, I've done this before and I know for my uh, external graphics card that my core clock uh, limit is basically 170. Um, anything above 170, and this is again on my GPU. Um, I start getting issues, and by issues I mean the benchmarks or gaming uh, will crash. Uh, there'll be juttering, um, stuttering, uh, long pauses. Um, now, if you come across that again, uh, remember, uh, use the reset um, settings here. So just click that, and you see there it resets everything and the fan speed back. Um, so you can do that. It, it's, it's safe. Um, you, we're not messing around with power limits we're not messing around with voltages um, so the worst that you're going to do here is just uh, give your uh, GPU a headache and as soon as you see that happening just reset it now say for example you uh, set your core clock to 200 and you noticed that you got these artifacts issues uh, reset it and then go down to uh, 180 test again if you still get artifacts, go down again until you find something stable. Um, and then once you've got that, um, obviously just, you know, run a few games, um, have, a, have a play, have a session for a couple of hours and make sure that everything's good. Um, and then once you've done your core clock, you found your stable core clock. So in my case, plus 170, uh, you can then do the memory clock. Um, and again, like the core clock, do it in steps. Uh, but with memory, you can probably do it in steps of uh, 50 uh, megahertz. So um, you do 50, 100, 150, 200. Now, for me, I've managed to get all the way up to uh, a 300 hertz. I probably could go higher. Um, the last time I did it, I um, started running into issues. So I just keep mine at 300. And uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, that's what we'll do. Um, and again, once that's done, apply it. And don't forget here your fan speed, take it off auto and ramp it up to around 75, maybe 80, depending on your environment. If you're in a hot room, um, uh, you'll wanna uh, bump it up a bit more. But basically you wanna keep this temperature uh, below, uh, below 80 degrees um, so we don't get any uh, temp limit throttling um, that's set by default there. Okay, so got my core clock set to 100 uh, plus 170 my memory to plus 300 uh, let's see what our results are like so going back exactly the same test uh, we want it um, not we want it in a window we're running at 1080p and we've got everything set to high and uh, the options are set to on let's run this and again in the video I'll cut through to it or speed it up uh, to get to the results all right let's run this and see see the amazing difference <laughs> and note straight away obviously we can see in the clock there uh, for the GPU it's gone up is by what we'd expect and if you look in the actual um, benchmarking there you've got the memory at uh, 4303 remember this is DDR so that's uh, basically 8606 um, for the memory so uh, we know that our overclocking is applied okay so let's see how well this does Okay, so let's have a look at our results there. Those are um, 
quite nice. So we've got 51.47 on our um, minimum. So that's a nice boost. So that's basically uh, six frames per second uh, on the minimum. And on the average, we've got 62, 62.6, .6, which is uh, three frames three frames per second so on the average that's just not really that good is it um, and on the max we then have 78.5 uh, which is basically four frames per second yeah so I mean on the minimum there you got six frames per second if I ran that test again it might be different um, as with all these uh, sort of things but on the average there three frames per second four frames per second you've gained um, is that is that worth it is, is, is that what you really need um, <laughs> I don't know I I my problem with this stuff is that the gains are so small um, that it's just not worth it if you if you're scratching around for you know uh, between three and six frames per second uh, with overclocking then uh, I would suggest you've bought the wrong uh, solution I you should buy a better graphics card or you shouldn't be using an external GPU if it's that much of a concern to you you'd be better off just toning down some of your graphic settings in your games and then you'd be fine um, obviously for me I like to game over 60 frames uh, per second or at 60 frames per second because that's what my monitor outputs um, so I find in my case that um, I can play most games at 60 frames per second uh, with pretty decent graphic settings and I'm happy with that um, but anyway you've seen there uh, how to um, overclock um, give it a go if you want but um, like I say I, I personally just don't think it's worth it um, but if you do do it um, let us know how you get on and remember it's very important do it in incremental steps okay um, and if you manage to black screen your um, monitor uh, don't panic just uh, switch uh, your laptop uh, on and off again and unplug your eGPU plug it back in and it will all reset um, and remember when you are doing your um, finding your uh, limits uh, if you start coming across stuttering in your benchmarking or games uh, just reset your card uh, by using this reset option here like I've just done there um, and when you do find your limits if you find that you want to stick with it uh, you can save them uh, in these profiles here um, and you can also select the startup option uh, which will apply um, your save settings uh, when your machine starts up personally I wouldn't bother I would just you know fire up MSI afterburner when you're gaming um, and then select your saved profile unfortunately you can't name these but hey ho uh, anyway that's it um, hope uh, you found the video enjoyable if informative um, let us know what you think um, give me a like um, subscribe and uh, as always thank you for watching and take care and I'll catch you next time cheers bye bye